jump back into the world of Android, but this time around I'm excited to check out a tablet that has the potential to be a great option for those looking for something a bit more affordable and compact. The iPlay 50 Mini Pro from Aldo Cube has recently received a slight refresh with support for Widevine L1 and comes powered by a chip that is no stranger to the channel, the MediaTek Helio G99. And as we always do here on the channel, I'm going to examine the iPlay 50 Mini Pro's gaming chops and check out native Android gaming, emulation, and even some game streaming. So please join me, Rob the Retro Tech Dad, and together let's explore the iPlay 50 Mini Pro's potential as an affordable Android tablet option. Let's talk about the specs of the iPlay 50 Mini Pro NFE, which now has support for Widevine L1 for streaming services such as Netflix. The iPlay 50 Mini Pro comes equipped with an 8.4 inch IPS in-cell display at a resolution of 1920 by 1200. And it's powered by the MediaTek Helio G99, which has two Cortex-A76 cores and six Cortex-A55 cores, as well as a Mali G57 MC2 for graphics. The iPlay 50 Mini Pro uses extended RAM technology and features 8GB of internal memory with 8GB of virtual memory for a total of 16GB. Aldo Cube offers the Mini Pro in two options for internal storage at 128GB or 256GB and does provide the option to expand storage via the microSD slot. The Mini Pro features Wi-Fi 802.11ac and Bluetooth 5.2 with a USB Type-C port for data and charging only as well as a 3.5mm headset port. Additionally, the Mini Pro has support for a nano SIM card on a 4G LTE network. There is a 5000 mAh battery, and the Mini Pro supports 18 watt power delivery fast charging. It ships with Android 13 out of the box, and is available now for purchase directly from AliExpress or Amazon.com, and the iPlay 50 Mini Pro is typically available on sale for around $120 US dollars for the 120GB model and $150 US dollars for the 256GB model. As usual, I will have links to the specific model down in the description area. I'd also like to thank Aldo Cube for sending me the Mini Pro for the purposes of this review. As I always require, they did not review this video prior to publishing. So let's now unbox the iPlay 50 Mini Pro. First things first, I'll grab my trusty blade to take care of the factory seal, and then we can enjoy a brief moment of some ASMR. In the top right corner, we have the NFE Brandy, which is how we can distinguish the specific refresh from the older model of the iPlay 50 Mini Pro, which does not support Widevine L1. The packaging is very simple with very minimal branding on the front and just generic branding on the back. In fact, I don't see anywhere on this package that actually tells me the model I have here without that NFE sticker. So let's take off this outer sleeve and get this cover off so we can dive right into this package. In front and center we have the tablet, but as we always do, let's put this aside for a moment and continue diving into this package. Below the tablet, we have the user guide, which is just a simple paper insert and details the specs and features of the tablet. We have these nice convenient cutouts to remove the inner portion of the package here, and it does look like we have the power adapter and then nothing else. The power adapter itself supports USB Type-A. And of course, in the other package that's on the side here, we have the USB Type-C to Type-A cable for this power adapter. Inside the bag, we also have the key to remove the tray to access the micro SD and SIM card. So let's now get our first look at the iPlay 50 Mini Pro and free it from its plastic baggie. The backside is a very nice gray color that feels really good and just immediately in my hands, I'm impressed by how light and thin this tablet is. So let's go ahead and take a tour around the iPlay 50 Mini Pro and starting at the top, we have this single USB Type-C input for data and power delivery. In the top left corner, we have a 3.5 millimeter headset port, which is a nice inclusion and very much a welcome thing on a device like this. On the left side of the tablet, we have access to the tray which can hold a micro SD card and SIM card. We need to use the included tool to gain access to this tray, which personally I am not a big fan of as you now require an additional piece to gain access to that micro SD card. Moving along, let's now go to the bottom of the tablet and this features only a single speaker. Continuing on, on the right side we have the volume up and down buttons as well as the power button right above that. 
So let's take a look at the back side of the tablet, which as I mentioned is gray and it does remind me of Apple's Space Gray. The back is metal as well and it does feel really nice in my hands with very minimal branding. The certification sticker as well as the quality control sticker can be removed to further reduce any branding. There is a single camera on the back that is only 5 megapixels and really nothing too exciting. On the front side, there is also a front facing 5 megapixel camera as well. So it looks like we have two pre-installed factory screen protectors on the tablet. The outer one obviously is meant to be removed, but the one below it is actually a screen protector. But I also recommend removing this as well since it has this weird texture and also distorts the image. So let's turn on the tablet for the first time so we can get an idea of what to expect during that initial boot. As I mentioned during these specs, we have Android 13 here out of the box and the usual Android setup, which includes getting your Wi-Fi set up, copying any data over, and of course signing into your Google account. Once that's all been done, we can now take a look at the main screen of the iPlay 50 mini Pro, which looks to be a very clean install of Android. I don't see anything here outside of the usual Google-based apps, and it doesn't look like there's any additional software loaded here from Aldo Q, which I definitely like to see. Now the tablet itself surprised me quite a bit with its build quality. It's very light, but feels solid thanks to its metal chassis. It's very sleek looking, and while its display isn't the best I've seen, it's still quite sharp and vibrant with solid viewing angles from top to bottom and side to side. It's not the brightest display I've personally used, and I believe this tops out at 320 nits of brightness, but the brightness does scale down to a very low level, and even further with the option for an extra dim setting and a bedtime mode for those wanting to use it in low light situations such as in bed. Now my unit didn't have any backlight bleeding either, and generally this is a pretty solid panel, especially at the price point. Now one area I did find to be lacking quite a bit is the single speaker on the tablet. It's a bit of a shame since a device of this size is absolutely perfect for media consumption. And generally, you're gonna wanna have the volume turned way up to really hear anything well, and even then, the quality of that single speaker leaves a lot to be desired. I do appreciate the inclusion of the 3.5 millimeter headset port, and of course, you can pair Bluetooth headphones to the tablet, but it's definitely something I hope Aldo Cube can improve on in a future version of this tablet. So before we dive into gaming, I actually wanted to test out a few controller attachments with the iPlay 50 mini Pro since I do think this tablet and an external controller attachment is going to be one of the best use cases for something like this iPlay 50 mini Pro. I've rounded up quite a few of my external controllers, but I've narrowed it down specifically to these four as they really are the best fit for the tablet and personally have found the experience really solid with them. So we have a range of options that work right out of the box to one that needs a bit of modding, but it's probably well worth the time to do it. So let's start with the two controllers from a brand simply known as BSP, and both of the BSP controllers here are Bluetooth based. Here I have the D8, which is this really sleek looking Starfield branded controller, and I really like the way this tablet looks and sits in this controller. It keeps things as compact as possible with a good weight distribution, but also is super comfortable to hold. This combo is just a little over one pound or about 487 grams, which is really light considering we have a nice sizable eight inch display here. The D9, which when paired with the iPlay 50, looks like a PlayStation Portal, and it's probably my least favorite since it doesn't quite feel as secure as the other options. I think the D9 in general is probably better suited to a much larger tablet, and so I feel like the springs in here are not giving it a strong enough grip when paired with the iPlay 50. The controller itself is very comfortable though, and if you're wanting to thoroughly confuse someone about how your PlayStation Portal is actually useful for more than just one thing, this would probably be the way to go. This combination is on the heavier side from the options here, coming in at a one pound, three ounces or 565 grams. Let's now check out the set of GameSir controllers that I have here, and both GameSir controllers are using the USB Type-C connection. First, let's start with the X2S, which actually was sent over to me by GameSir, and I've been excited to showcase this controller since I first saw it at CES, where the CEO of GameSir did the pop and lock and showed us this sort of secret trick that the X2 has which is its ability to expand to a tablet size. Okay, why do you tell me this till now? This is, this is an exclusive trick. This is an exclusive, exclusive trick. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wait, I got my bed. This is what the world's been waiting for. Oh. Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> Stretch it. Now, I have to say, it's not my favorite combination with this tablet specifically. As you can see from the back, it sort of bends inwards because the tablet is so thin that it doesn't really have anywhere to rest on it. However, you can 3D print a bracket for it and so this is an option that both works out of the box, but maybe requires an additional piece to make it all come together to feel a bit more cohesive. The spring does hold the tablet firmly in place, but the right side does have too much wiggle room without a bracket there. 
It's also not as comfortable as the other three options, but it's definitely the most compact and with a USB Type-C connection will have the least amount of pairing issues. As a complete unit, the X2S and iPlay 50 come together with a total weight of one pound or 481 grams, making this the lightest combination, but very close to the BSP D8. Finally, I have the GameSir G8 Galileo, or in this case, the Red Magic branded version of the controller called the Shadow Blade 2. And for me, this is by far the most comfortable option and uses a USB Type-C connection for the best pairing. However, this controller does require a mod to get it to work with larger devices. And so it's also the option that doesn't quite work out of the box without some modification. However, it's a very simple mod to make. And if you are curious about doing it, my friend Shem over at RetroBreeze has a fantastic video that will help guide you through it. I also 3D printed my own bracket for this controller to help give it support in the back, much like what the X2S would require. But after doing all this, this controller is such a great feeling combination. And for those a little more daring, probably the way to go with the BSP D8 actually being my next choice here. By the way, the G8 with the iPlay 50 is the heaviest option here, coming in at a little over one pound, four ounces or 587 grams. So finally, it's now time to check out some gaming and we will first start with native Android games. I will be spending a decent amount of time here as naturally this is an Android device. And so let's really check out what this affordable tablet can do in terms of gaming. I will cover a range of experiences from free to play, premium, games with controller support, and then games that make great use of the touchscreen. It wouldn't be an Android showcase without one of the best racing game experiences on the platform. Horizon Chase is a fantastic arcade racer that is definitely not a stranger to the channel, and it's just a fantastic game that works on plenty of platforms across all sorts of performance requirements. Unsurprisingly, the Helio G99 in the Mini Pro isn't having any trouble with this one, and it does really look great on this display, as well as supporting controllers natively. Another awesome and lighter game that works on plenty of Android devices is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, which is a Netflix exclusive on Android and free for Netflix subscribers. This is an awesome port of the game, and I always love seeing more of these kinds of experiences on the platform. If you haven't checked this one out, it's well worth the playthrough, and it does have controller support, so a Bluetooth or USB Type-C controller like the Shadow Blade 2 I'm using here is a perfect fit. Let's get into a bit more demanding games, and we have another awesome Netflix exclusive game with Shattered Remastered. And this one was always a hidden gem for me back when the original one launched on Steam many years ago. With the remastered version making its way to Android, it's now become a go-to game for me since it does work on a lot of devices, looks great, and best of all, it's a blast to play and perfect for pick up and play gaming. Grim Valor is another great game that does very well with the iPlay 50 Mini Pro and the Helio G99, and we can even turn things up a bit on the graphics side with the game here set to use best quality in high settings without much issue. Grim Valor is an awesome Metroidvania style game that is easily one of the premier experiences available on Android and the Google Play Store. This is another very high quality game that has native controller support. But let's now check out some of the free to play games, such as the popular Diablo Immortal, which is definitely pushing the limits of this tablet, but still a playable experience and always a nice fit for a tablet screen, since the smaller details are easier to see on a larger screen. Personally, I think Diablo Immortal is a much better suited experience for larger screens. And Diablo Immortal is another one with built-in controller support, and again works great with a number of controller attachments or Bluetooth controllers. So it's almost impossible to not talk about Genshin Impact when discussing Android gaming, and it's always a good test of hardware as well. I do have Genshin Impact set to use the lowest settings, which didn't really surprise me all that much, but it is still a very smooth and solid experience using the lowest settings and the visuals hold up despite having the larger 8-inch screen, which will show more of these details over something smaller commonly seen in a mobile device like an Android phone. So let me go ahead and pair up my Xbox Series controller and test out the Bluetooth capabilities here with the iPlay 15 Mini Pro, which didn't have any issues and paired right up with the tablet. I think Call of Duty Mobile is the perfect game to test this out with, and I actually have Call of Duty Mobile set to use medium graphic settings, and gameplay is very solid here. It's always a blast to hop into a match of Call of Duty, and it's a really nice experience this way with the larger screen. And of course, another very popular Android game. Here I have Fortnite set to use the low graphic settings option, and outside of a few spots where frame rates drop, which is usually at the initial drop when starting a match, the gameplay is actually quite smooth when on ground using these settings, and again, another one that works very well here with the iPlay 50. 
This is a game that has native controller support on Android, and so you have plenty of options to work with here when choosing how to play Fortnite. But regardless, the larger screen is always a welcome thing to have here, while not feeling like it's too much to manage in terms of weight. And one possibly overlooked area when talking about native Android games are the vast amount of quality games that use only a touchscreen. But given that we have a much larger screen here than what you'd find on a phone, a lot of the touchscreen only games are an absolute joy to play when paired with a larger screen. Not only that, but the iPlay 50 is also a very light and thin tablet, and so it's a pleasure holding the tablet for longer play sessions. And recently, I've been thoroughly hooked by Slay the Spire, which did receive a native Android version, but is touchscreen based on Android and really an awesome fit here with the iPlay 50. It's just one of many great touchscreen only games, and definitely let me know down in the comments if you'd like for me to spotlight some of those experiences on Android. So let's now shift over to emulation. And generally, I found everything earlier than PlayStation 2 and gave you to run quite well here, including some of the more difficult platforms like the Sega Saturn, which ran at full speed. But for this emulation showcase, let's focus on some more high-end platforms that we can enjoy on Android. Let's start out with some GameCube emulation using the Dolphin emulator. Now I tested various builds of Dolphin, and generally I found both Mainline Dolphin from the Play Store and Dolphin MMJR2 to provide a pretty solid experience on the iPlay 50. Now since we are dealing with a device that has no active cooling and a very slim body with the intended use of media consumption, the Helio G99 in the iPlay 50 Mini Pro is not utilizing the full potential of the chipset, but that is to be expected given its intended use case. Do not expect this tablet to perform the same way it would on something like the KTR1 handheld that uses the same Helio G99, since again we are not making use of active cooling or pushing and sustaining those clock speeds as high as it is on the KTR1. Which means that for higher end emulation like GameCube, I'd definitely say that you will want to stay with lighter to middle ground GameCube games and realistically expect issues with more demanding titles like F-Zero GX, which I did test on various builds of Dolphin, but it doesn't quite run full speed at native resolution. You're going to generally want to use PAL versions of GameCube games as well, but I did test quite a few GameCube games which produced better than expected results, and when looking at the bigger picture is quite impressive given the iPlay 50 Mini Pro has been on sale recently for as cheap as 100 US dollars, and it's pretty amazing to see platforms like the GameCube and even PlayStation 2 running at all on a tablet this affordable. But luckily, there's quite a number of great GameCube games, including Pikmin 2 and Wave Race Blue Storm, which have been playing on screen, and both games are using the PAL versions at native resolution. I can't quite say the same for Wii with Dolphin, and for the most part, yeah, you can forget about it. For Wii, the absolute lightest of games will be the goal here, and even titles like Tatsunoko vs Capcom still had some issues at native resolution with Dolphin. And the story will be much of the same when moving to Sony's PlayStation 2 using the 3668 build of Ether SX2. Generally, for this tablet, like GameCube, I'd recommend using the PAL versions of games for the most performance, and even then, I'd mostly stick to lighter PS2 games such as We Love Katamari, and surprisingly titles like SSX Tricky, which fare better on lower-end hardware than expected. But games like God of War 2 are close, but not quite full speed, using the PS2's native resolution and the Vulcan backend. The more demanding games will require a bit more tweaking to get better performance out of it. PlayStation Portable, on the other hand, is definitely a highlight here with this tablet since the Helio G99, even when not fully utilized, is doing a great job with PSP emulation using the PPSSPP emulator. I always like to start out with lighter games when first getting comfortable with a device, and of course something like Loco Roco or Lumines here will have no issues at all. In fact, I have Lumines running at 6 times the native resolution of the PlayStation Portable using the Vulcan backend, and it's definitely a real treat, especially when paired with a solid external controller combo. And even as we push the iPlay harder with more demanding games, the Helio G99 is proving to be more than capable with titles like Ridge Racer, which is easily one of my favorite racing games on the platform, and it always looks so beautiful when upscaled beyond the native resolution. I do have Ridge Racer here set to use 3 times the native resolution, and again it's proven to be no issue for this tablet. Finally we will finish this off with one of the more demanding games for PSP, and even God of War Chains of Olympus is doing well with a 2 times native resolution upscale, and so PlayStation Portable on the iPlay 50 Mini Pro is definitely very solid and a platform I'd highly recommend on here. One last thing I had to show for fun with emulation was using the tablet in its vertical orientation. And with the BSP D8 and D9, we can actually do this without any issues. And of course, the first thing that comes to mind for me at least is using this setup for Nintendo DS emulation, which is obviously going to be no issue for a device like this with that Helio G99. I definitely had to load up a few of my DS favorites, including some good old shmup goodness with Katsui Black Label and Nanostray, 
And speaking of shmups, that's another great use case for this vertical orientation with this setup and just something fun to consider if you're using a Bluetooth controller attachment like the ones that I've featured here. Now, personally for me, game streaming is where something like this iPlay 50 mini pro will really shine. We have a tablet that has a pretty solid screen, slim profile and weight, as well as decent Wi-Fi capabilities. And when paired with a nice external controller, like one of the many options I discussed earlier, the experience is really awesome. We know that this tablet will have realistic limitations when it comes to what it can play on the emulation side, but with game streaming, we open an entire new world of what this very affordable tablet can suddenly play. It just so happens that here with the BSP D9 controller attachment, the iPlay 50 starts to resemble a device that does streaming as well. But unlike the PlayStation Portal, not only can we stream from our PS5, we're able to also stream Xbox and of course PC games. For example, you can see I've been playing Spider-Man Remastered using Moonlight, and this is being streamed from my local desktop PC, and the experience is awesome. Being able to relax on my couch with the RetroTech Mommy and play my high-end PC games using the capabilities of that desktop is something that I have greatly enjoyed doing with this tablet and just tablets in general. The craziest part is that as a complete package with the iPlay 50 and then a controller attachment of your choice, it really becomes a great option against something like the PlayStation Portal except that we have far more versatility and amazingly a cheaper overall cost. And despite the tablet being very light and thin, there is still a 5,000 mAh battery packed into here. And I did a real world battery test with the iPlay and caught up on some YouTube watching some of my favorite content. And the iPlay 50 mini pro managed eight and a half hours of on-screen watching time at 50% brightness and 50% volume with YouTube set to the 1080p resolution. I did have the device set to the battery saver mode, which turns off background applications as well as some other settings to optimize for battery life. In this situation, we were using Wi-Fi for YouTube, and so I do think that eight and a half hours of on-screen time is very solid. Charging will be under two hours when going from zero to 100%, which is again, pretty typical for devices like this. In the end, I do think the iPlay 50 mini pro really is a great affordable and compact option for most. Considering the options that are out there in the market, the iPlay 50 mini pro at its price point is a very solid device that handles most of the tasks for someone looking at an Android tablet and using it for things like reading, web browsing, watching YouTube videos, and of course, other types of media consumption. Not only that, but I demonstrated that the iPlay 50 can even handle a lot of the native Android games quite well. And it becomes a pretty solid experience when paired with an external controller. And even on the emulation side, we can get away with some lighter PS2 and GameCube emulation and everything below that will handle quite well on this device. And of course there's game streaming, which is where this thing will really shine since we have a nice compromise between the screen size and weight. But when paired with an external controller, it really feels like a cohesive experience at a very reasonable cost, especially when you compare it to options like a PlayStation portal, which can only do one thing. I think the appeal of a budget tablet like the iPlay 50 mini pro is very intriguing because for many at the price, it becomes a device that you can keep at your bedside or leave it on your coffee table and have it accessible for those times when you want to just do some game streaming or light gaming or media consumption with a very inexpensive tablet. Finally, there aren't that many eight inch tablets that are actually this solid overall. And so it's a refreshing thing to see in a space that focuses on very large screens. At the end of the day, this is a great budget choice, and I think most will not be disappointed by this tablet. I hope you enjoyed this review. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel grow. As always, I am the Retro Tech Dad, and thank you so much for watching.